I don't know if they're here yet. Um, so just keep that in mind. There may be press here as well too. Uh, but also we are recording the event as well too. So um, um, just, and then we'll send the, the recording to everybody after as well too. So we'll go over some of that again because I know people are gonna continue to, to, to join us as well too. So um, again, Lisa, thank you. Um, and the town of Chelmsford, I see Paul Cohen here as well too. Thank you, Paul, um, for, for starting our first virtual networking event. Um, but before we get into the presentations, maybe we can catch up with some people. And, and uh, Jessica, I, I see you here, and, and I, I haven't had a chance to really ch uh, catch up with you as well, too. And how's everything at Hanscom Air Force Base? Stephanie, um, thank you, as always, for including us. Um, I'm excited to see everybody again. It feels like forever since we've all had a chance to, to gather like this. Um, things are going well at the base. Um, we have, um, for anyone who's interested in the details of, of how we're responding to COVID, we have a dedicated page on our website. Um, if you go to the main homepage, which is um, handscum.af.mil, there's a button on the upper right hand corner. If you click on it, it'll take you right there. Um, but essentially, we are taking um, a lagging approach to the state. So we're about 10 days or so behind uh, where the state is as far as phases. Most of our workforce is still uh, working from home. Um, we have folks at, on the base doing some services type uh, work that needs to be, happen for residents that live on the base. But um, we're continuing to um, you know, take care of the mission and, and do what we need to do just in an unconventional way, <laughs> but things are going well. Good. Good. <laughs> And, and I know that there's a lot of telecommuting going on there, which I think the town of Bedford can also um, talk about too, in terms of just the, the traffic. Um, seems as though we're, we're in a different situation when it comes to traffic as well too. Um, so just if anybody wants to jump in, um, Trish, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm, I'm feeling you don't like that, um, <laughs> but, but I will. Uh, <laughs> how's everything going at, at EA? Oh, you're off. You're, you're, you're on mute, by the way. And I can... Um, sorry about that. We're, we're at about um, maybe 30% of the people going in. Um, whoever can work from home, we're going to have them work from home probably till, I would say, the end of the year, um, at least. Um, I go in maybe once every two weeks. And we just have essential personnel, people that work in the labs, um, that can't do their job from home, they're going in. But it's the same, th same thing, we're taking temperatures, masks. Um, you know, we have, we've put um, tables in our cafeteria. We've, you know, taken, we're taking every precaution. We have, um, um, you know, s s chemicals everywhere to disinfect and, and um, the nano shield, we put that over all our doors and panels and everything. So, um, we're just trying to keep everybody safe. And so, I mean, I think we have maybe five people using the shuttle um, right now at this point. But it's, it's, it's going to be like this, I, I would say, at least until the end of 2020. Yeah, I, I've heard other companies um, saying something similar as well, too. And I don't know if anyone wants to, to jump in. You see, Nancy over at, at Sterling, I, I know you've talked about that as well, too and how things are going over at your company. And, and actually, could I ask if everyone wants to put their company's information in their, um, uh, next to their name, that would be helpful as well too. But Nancy, how's everything going over at Sterling? Oh, I'm sorry, you're on mute as well. I'm gonna unmute. Oh, Here I am. Hello, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> muted. Um, we have a lot of clients that have to move things around that have been up and running the whole time, just like we have. We take care of a lot of the life sciences users. Uh, for example, Biogen, Pfizer, Moderna. They're working on um, different treatments for COVID-19. They're working on vaccine. So we've been helping them. And then the other companies have to move things out to accommodate the COVID-19 requirements with the less, uh, less furniture to keep people apart. We've been installing um, 
screens just so that um, people are protected that way. It's, it, it's kind of unusual, but as far as big moves, they have not been as common, to say the least. Well, good luck with everything, and, and it, good, good luck as we move forward. And uh, please let us know if there's anything that we can do to, to help as well, too, and make some con connections. Um, and, and again, for the people who have joined us, we're just taking a few minutes before we kick off the program to kind of to, just to check in with everyone, um, see what's going on in everyone's world. Um, if you'd like to be part of the, uh, the virtual networking, please turn on your screen. If you don't want to turn off your screen, if you want to connect with people, um, outside of the meeting, if you want to include your contact information in the chat box, and we'll send that out to the whole group as well, too. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw it out to, to, to anyone who wants to, to jump in. Um, I, I, I see um, Deb over at Lowell General. Uh, I, I know you're doing well over there. Thank you for all your work. Um, you've unmuted yourself, so I'm going to say- Oh, I didn't yourself. know if you wanted me to say anything. Thank I'd love you to say something. How are things going at Lowell General? Things are, are, are going well at Lowell General. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate the, uh, you, you checking in with us. And, um, you know, I just love the opportunity to reassure everyone that we are an organization ready to take care of you and your, and your staff in the region. Um, we have our Safe With Us campaign to remind folks that um, we are using the best practices. And uh, it's exciting to see surgeries starting up and elective procedures uh, really just humming along. So, um, you know, we're, we're always so mindful of those folks who have maybe um, put, put off procedures or put off um, healthcare and, and eager for them to re-engage in that because we are creating a safe environment for them and we want them to make sure they're, um, you know, they're taking good care of themselves. So thank you, Stephanie. Great, and, and I know you have some good, re great resources if uh, people do get sick during this time as well too. So. Absolutely, yep. And so lots of COVID tests if you need. More, more, tra more testing, I think. And uh, Maria, great to see you as well too. It's been a long time we've se seen you from Enterprise Bank. Uh, I, I know there's a lot going on. I, I, I don't know, we can save this until afterwards as well too. We, we have a number of people already on the call, um, unless somebody wants to jump in before we start our formal presentation. Uh, I think it's getting, it's, it can be awkward. Let's wait. This, this is our first, this is our first virtual networking event. So I think we're going to, we, we need to change the, the we, we may be changing the format, the timing and, and such as we create our, our virtual networking events. Uh, but we did save time at the end to continue the discussion in terms of Q and A and, and um, uh, discussions with the panel. Um, so we'll, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to be moving people off screen um, and then after the formal presentations, we're going to move people back on screen as well, too. Um, so, so I think maybe we'll do that now and then uh, get into the, the presentation. And then after the presentation, we'll continue with our, our networking and our um, just discussion on what's going on in everybody's, in everybody's world. Um, so I'm going to kick off the discussion with, um, with what's happening with the Middlesex Three Coalition. And um, we, like everyone else, and Erin, I know you had a, a, um, a PowerPoint. We can put that up at any point, really. Um, but we, like everyone else, um, we're changing our format, um, have changed over the last six months um, to include um, more virtual events, more Zoom events, and, um, and, and also to, to restart our subcommittees. Stephanie. And just give me one second. I'm just going to start moving people over and then I'll get the PowerPoint up. Okay. Just Actually, why don't you put the PowerPoint up first if you, if you don't mind. We, okay. People can stay on if they want to. Sorry, this is our first one. We're, we're working out the kinks. Can you see, everyone see it? Nope. Okay. Okay, that's it. Good, good. Okay. Um, and if you can just move to the to the events as well, I just want to let people know some of the events that we've been trying to um, to to plan. Oh, actually, just to, if we can go back again, if you'd like to put your uh, contact information um, into the chat box, we're going to send that to everybody afterwards as well. Too, this event is being recorded, so we'll send a link to everyone as well. Um, 
So thank you for that. Uh, so we are planning a number of events over the next um, year. Uh, and so we're starting with our What's Happening in Middlesex 3. So thank you to the town of Chelmsford for being our first virtual What's Happening meeting. And, um, and, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, but So we have a number of other What's Happening meetings, including um, with the city of Lowell, Lowell General, Farley White, a AHP Architects uh, in September and October with the town of uh, Tingsboro and November with the town of Tewksbury. And we'll get more information on that as we move forward. Uh, in September, we have a, our business leadership series. We're gonna be kicking it off with life sciences and looking at the workforce development at, focused on life sciences. So we'll be bringing our life science companies together with uh, our educational institutions. Uh, Bob Coughlin from MassBio will be moderating that discussion and really just looking at what are the workforce needs today and tomorrow, making certain that we have the workforce that we need in order to continue to attract life science companies to this region. Uh, we'll also be um, having a transportation um, business leadership series as well as the economic outlook for 2021. Hopefully we'll have good news by then. Um, and um, we also are starting a new series. It's, it's our real estate series. We're still trying to work out a title for it, but it's a spotlight series on real estate um, development on, in, different, in different industries. So starting in September, we're gonna focus on, on housing and then October will be restaurants and warehousing, uh, retail, life sciences, and, and it goes on. If you're interested in being involved with any of these, um, uh, events, please let us know and we'd be happy to, to include you on the panels for, for these discussions as well too. Uh, and then the next one uh, is, thank you, is, is our subcommittees, which we're, uh, we're kicking those off or re restarting those via Zoom. And we have five subcommittees. Uh, again, if you're interested in being involved, um, please let us know. And Erin, if maybe we can have a link to the calendar, because we have all the events that are um, outlined and the dates of them. And if you'd like to sign up for them, we'd love to have you as part of them. The transportation subcommittee is going to look at um, initiatives, concerns, and projects to improve transportation. Obviously, that's changed, um, but I don't think the, the problem has gone away. Um, and how are we going to change our focus um, based upon our, our needs today and tomorrow? Education and workforce, certainly this is one that we're going to have a lot of focus on. Uh, to discuss future workforce development needs and programs and, and grants uh, to keep our workforce strong. We also have one on real estate and infrastructure, which is going to take a look at um, opportunities to improve the regional infrastructure and, and real estate development um, in our region. And then there's a fourth on marketing and membership. I think that's self-explanatory. And then also a subcommittee on um, economic development. And that's, this is really just an FYI uh, to let you know that our municipalities have been meeting on a monthly, weekly, or every other week of um, event where our economic developers, our economic development stakeholders, municipalities are meeting to discuss concerns, best practices, ideas to keep um, business development, um, to improve business development in each municipality. So just to let you know that the municipalities uh, have been collaborating over the last um, six months on how to make, keep this region strong. And again, if you're interested in being involved with any of those, please let us know. Uh, we do have sponsorships for these as well, too. I know this, that's a lot of information right here. So again, we can include a link to this. Uh, but just to let you know, we have one sponsorship opportunity for our real estate webinar, as well as for our business leadership and our What's Happening series. So if you're interested in those, please um, uh, connect with us um, and and actually if you can move forward as well too I think most of our member the people on this call are members but thank you for your membership uh, if you're not um, maybe we can go to the next series I'm, I'm going to skip over the membership because I think everyone's a member here uh, but if you haven't met with our team um, please where's Erin Erin has hit herself uh, please uh, we, we'd love to connect with you, um, including Erin Kinkinda is our deputy director, and Steph Fritz has joined. There you go. Thank you. And, and Steph, if you want to unhide yourself as well, too, Steph is our marketing and membership coordinator. She started um, right when this hit as well, and she's been doing a great job just kind of keeping us um, organized. So I breezed through that because I think really what you want to hear is what's happening in Chelmsford. Um, so with that, um, 
I want to um, thank the town of Chelmsford, um, Camoyne Associates and Howard Stein Hudson for presenting today. And um, Lisa, I see. Um, Lisa, I know that there are a number of people from Chelmsford, um, so I want to thank them for coming. I'm starting with, with Paul Cohen, the town manager in Chelmsford, who's also the president of Middlesex 3, so he's my boss as well. Uh, and, um, and I believe um, Evan Belansky was, is on this call as well. Um, in, as well as Don Van Dyne from the Economic Development Committee. So you've got a great team. I don't know if I missed anybody from the town, um, but thank you for, for presenting today. And then I, I know you'll be, um, you'll be joined by Kamoin Associates. And so I see, um, I see uh, uh, Krista Franzi from Kamoin Associates who will be joining us. And, and Christine, is Jim here as well too? I don't know, if, but, but thank you to, to, to Jim. Um, and D Damsini for, for joining us as well too, if he's on the call. And then uh, Katie Enright from Howard Stein Hudson will be uh, following up the conversation and focusing more on the housing um, initiatives going on in Chelmsford as well too. So Katie, thank you for, for joining the conversation and, uh, and also Katie's on my board of directors. So thank you for all your work with Middlesex 3 Coalition. Did I cover everything, Erin? Okay, so You're what great. I'm gonna do- oh, Yeah. Okay, so thank you. So we're going to take this presentation down and um, I'm going to hide myself since I'm not going to be speaking and I'll ask all the other uh, people who will not who are not speaking as well just to take the video off so we can focus on on the speaker and then we'll, we'll move over from there. Work okay? And Lisa, so I think I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Stephanie, for all that great information. It's great to be here. Shout out to my Chelmsford uh, municipal teammates. It's been quite an experience in 2020. Um, I want to kind of apologize a little bit ahead of time for the duplication. Some people on here today were part of a meeting that I hosted yesterday, as well as my colleagues in economic development, where, as you mentioned, we meet regularly, which is very, very helpful, but there may be some duplication in my uh, message today. And due to um, the length of Chelmsford's what's happening, I'm going to keep it brief. And so I didn't do any PowerPoint slides. I'm just going to narrate a few uh, high level things that are happening. And then I'll explain the relationship we have with Kamoin. Um, very exciting about that. And we all know that Katie from Howard Stein Hudson always has some uh, amazing projects happening and uh, we do have some things growing in uh, Chelmsford to uh, share and announce very exciting stuff. So I'll just get right into it. Um, so big news of what's happening, Thermo Fisher, who has a location in Chelmsford, a smaller site on Alpha Road, has been looking around and chose one of our large long-term empty buildings at 220 Mill Road, which is not the most um, curb appeal on that building. So we were very thrilled to hear that news and they are well on their way in uh, fitting that up. The building is 113,000 square feet and right now they're occupying about 85,000. This is a new expansion for them here in Chelmsford. So that's another uh, great feather in the cap. I've been speaking with their real estate development team and their um, future goal is to invest between 40 and 60 million into that building. So what does that mean? Uh, we're talking about some really involved life science fit up into um, a very outdated site. This is great news for the Chelmsford Crossroads at Route 129, which you all know uh, probably the primary reason why I've been hired and brought in was to elevate and create a branding and identity for the Crossroads. And this Thermo Fisher project does just that. It helps us establish uh, a lot of credibility, uh, private funding coming into the corridor, it really aligns with what we are pursuing with Kamoin, which we'll be talking about, and job creation. It, it is a great uh, signature development for us during a time of um, difficulty and conflict in economic development. 
we're really starting to see some of those um, stars align, if you will, with Thermo Fisher coming online. Um, in with some of these large projects, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of people involved. I'm setting up uh, a meet and greet, even though they're already 80% uh, along in their project, but we know that relationship development is really important every day with every business in our town. And we've got about 15 or maybe even 20 people on this call coming up next week with Thermo Fisher. So that we're connecting at all levels with management, with inspections, with uh, fire, public safety, all those types of things are happening. And this is what we all do in the world of economic development and creating this, um, an alliance, if you will, because it's difficult for a municipality to create those working relationships. And when you can do this face-to-face, -face, you know, we're all got this Zoom um, fatigue, but we're becoming Zoom experts and a little more comfortable in the process. And we'll be having a, a Zoom meeting with Thermo. And I think it's been a really positive um, new announcement for us and maybe even um, attempting a, a ribbon cutting approach in a different way. So we'll see what comes of that. But I just kind of want to kick this off with that announcement. Thermo um, Triton Systems along with uh, the life science category of, of Thermo Fisher. Triton Systems is expanding. They're in Chelmsford now. They're moving to a new location, highly visible in the corridor at 330 Bill Rooker Road. Um, that building again has been empty for five plus years and showing um, some outdated infrastructure. So receiving a lot of um, private investment, upgrading, renovation, getting ready for a uh, life science fit up. They're taking the whole second floor this is another building that's a 100,000 square foot building. They're taking the second floor and possibly small portion of the first floor. So expansion project, project with Triton, we've been meeting with them. I just wanna also announce that uh, Town of Chelmsford is open to the public. We've been open since May. We are at full capacity, full power. We haven't slowed down building inspector, permits approvals, projects coming through. I'm sure Katie will um, allude to some of this happening. We are uh, at times moving fast forward, trying to keep up and uh, business development is a whole new way now. And we're all adapting and changing uh, daily. So I just kind of want to put it out there that we are uh, very, very busy and um, you know, doing quite well here in Chelmsford. So we've been meeting with Triton and they are fully connected with whatever they need from the town at different levels, similar to business development uh, meeting where everything's interconnected. We're building a relationship with them. We have pretty much an open line of communication with whatever they may need from us. And this sets the tone for business friendly environment, as you all know as well. And then this is how that momentum begins. And um, as realtors and property owners, we get more connected as there's interest and we start getting involved earlier in the process of um, being able to present the town as business friendly with these different types of meets and greets, exchanging cell phone numbers, emails, very close uh, interaction to expedite permitting, expedite um, inspections, things like that. And then you become known as business friendly and we can all kind of say that, but it's that action and the work that happens behind it with our response team, uh, COVID response team. They've been out there with uh, restaurant approvals, outdoor seating, our team goes out there and approves several every day. Um, with uh, public safety, building inspector, things like that. So we do have like a mini response to make sure that permits are happening very quickly and industry can get open as much as they're allowed to start with their uh, recovery, revenue, things like that. Um, so Triton is well on their way. They're in the process of fit up. The other great piece of news with that is um, we have secured a 10 year plus lease with uh, Press Cafe. They are coming into 330 Bill Ricker Road where Triton Systems will be located. This is our signature project with our first drive through allowed up to the office building. So this means a little more fit up, a little more renovation 
press cafe is pressing to open by the end of next year. We're not sure exactly how that timeline will line up because we've got to build out a drive through, but that is some really exciting news for us. We have worked so hard as a development team, Evan, particularly with the zoning changes, the overlay districts, the drive through allowances. These are not easy things to do. And part of that's been happening slowly moving forward over the last three years. Um, you know, you don't see a lot of it happening outward. You still drive down and see empty space. Looks like a lot of, um, you know, silence and, and um, not a lot of happenings, but really it's about to kind of come out in a public way. You see some of that fit up happening at 3.30 for multi-tenanting that building. And then soon you'll see some of that drive-through uh, coming, coming along. So the zoning is key. And this is what's been going on with Economic Development Commission, um, Evan, Planning Board, the town manager, leadership, and um, you're starting to see the fruition of that in an outward way. So very excited about Press Cafe coming. There should be a public release happening very soon. There is a bus stop right across the street with a bus shelter. Those little small changes help keep Chelmsford out there with public announcements and news. It might seem uh, pretty simple and small, but I think that's what each of our communities are doing to keep that uh, news feed and some kind of constant forward progress happening. And um, so also just received yesterday, Attorney General grant uh, funding has finally arrived. We applied for this in April and now it is pretty much the middle of August. So these uh, pursuits are exhaustive, they're frustrating. We're all trying to do the same thing. Um, I think the economic development um, colleague network that's happening is very helpful for us to keep encouragement going. And so Chelmsford was awarded the small business grant, not a lot of money. We have 1200 small businesses in our town, probably a little bit more than that. So we're doing the best we can in grant pursuits. Um, it's, you know, it's a changing time. It's more about trying to remain positive, trying to keep open communications to make sure that your businesses can reach you, can communicate. We're down to a one-on-one -on -one case by case situation, which is seems to be the best mode of business development these days. Um, a blanket approach doesn't necessarily work during a time of pandemic. So that's where a lot of time involved and um, you know teamwork. Teamwork is how we're making it happen. And um, I appreciate all of you on this call today to hear about it. I'm doing other small economic development initiatives with some event planning, lining up food trucks. Uh, I'm doing a little talk show, you know, and any, any of you are welcome to come on. Um, it is called The Q and maybe sometimes I get 150 viewers, not sure. Um, it's a multifaceted, uh, the goal is to answer questions about Chelmsford during the quarantine and now that that's lifted, we're basically just encouraging uh, businesses to come on and any type of network that will help our community promote and establish, we're on to it. Uh, we're interested to hear from any of you to come on the little talk show. If any of you want to um, see the link, I can send that out to you. But the highest um, prize for me these days is my working partnership with Camoin. We were um, gratefully awarded an earmark uh, from the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development. And we use that funding pretty much close to the wire within expiration because so much has changed in the last six months. Some of that funding was awarded as an incentive for Press Cafe. Um, so we did give them a business amenity incentive and that did push them over the line a little bit faster than they wanted to for their commitment. Um, so we got to take credit in that as a municipality. And then the other half of that earmark was awarded to Camoin. And I'm very happy to um, introduce them. I'm not going to steal any of their thunder and the great work that they're doing for the crossroads. They are an economic development uh, strategy consultant for us. 
We are working forward from the site readiness grant where Kamoin provided an in-depth study of those existing conditions. And this brings us to the next level of being able to re react and uh, move forward on their recommendations on how to turn around uh, Chelmsford Crossroads. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to Kamoin and then from there it would be great to have a couple of comments from uh, town manager and um, Chelmsford teammates, if you like, but Jim and, Jim and Krista, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, great to be here. I'll, I'll get started and I'll have Krista talk a little bit about the uh, what's happening going forward. Um, but I just want to thank, thanks, thank you for letting us be here today. Um, I'm Jim Demesis. I'm the Senior Vice President of Camoin 310. I've met probably many of you. It's a little hard to tell who's here um, uh, um, on um, virtual um, Zoom, but um, we worked uh, to develop the market study over about a year and a half ago, and many of you were present when we did the different sessions where we were presenting findings. I just want to remind people, and I know this has been hit, hit on, is um, that market study obviously was done pre-COVID. So, um, however, much of what's in there still applies. It just has to do with like what's happening on the ground right now and the timing of the market and things like that. But I encourage you, and I believe it's still available through the town's website, but if not, let Lisa know and we can make that report available on the uh, Crossroads um, Route 129 study. It has lots of data in there, lots of real estate data, and then there's also a section on targeted industries. And I just want to hit on that really quickly. The When we were doing the report, we specifically looked into uh, the targeted industries of advanced manufacturing, uh, information technology, professional and technical services, which include everything from like engineering to R&D to marketing and business analysis. Um, to life sciences, which is a very broad category that uh, covers everything from R&D in life sciences right through medical um, device manufacturing and pharmaceuticals and things like that as well. So that information is in there. And just before I turn it over to Krista, who can talk a little bit about what we're sort of our objectives are going forward, um, I just want to give a comment on COVID because I know this is um, not just about the Crossroads 129 park, but about the region as a whole. Um, so obviously there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, the fact that um, the uh, Lisa and team has been able to move on attracting some restaurants um, is, is actually amazing because that's one of the hardest hit um, sectors. Uh, we're seeing retail and restaurants and hotel and obviously recreation hugely impacted and that's going to continue for a while. Um, so the other thing that we're seeing is an uptick in three sectors, two of which overlap very well with the park, um, the light manufacturing and industrial. So like that sector has not been impacted as much. So while we're all trying to attract sort of high wage tech jobs, there are good high wage jobs in light industrial However, lots of areas are not necessarily zoned for that. So that's something to think about. Uh, logistics is another one, anything related to supply chain. So light industrial supply chain, food manufacturing, and then finally, uh, life sciences is still very strong, in fact, growing. And again, that includes everything from your um, your R&D, but also to your medical devices and medical services, if you will. Those were growing and they're going to continue to grow and they've been boosted by the trends in COVID. So with that, let me just see if I can um, turn it over to Krista just to talk a little bit about what we're doing um, with the town to partner with the uh, property and the business owners in the Crossroads Park. Thanks, Jim. Just want to make sure that you can hear me. Yes. You're good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm called in by phone, so that's why it says that I'm muted. So um, our goal is really, as part of working with Lisa, is to bring together business park, um, business leaders, and property owners, and organize working with the town 
um, really organizing for action is what we keep saying, is to implement both the recommendations from the market analysis, also get a better understanding of what's needed in the context of the COVID environment and COVID economy. And um, ultimately, we're trying to, you know, support and grow business investment and opportunities in the park at the crossroads. So we've started reaching out to um, this group to try to engage them, provide them with some information, and bring them into the process. And we're continuing to do that. Um, Lisa and, and Jim and I are going to be reaching out directly to some of the major employers and property owners in the park to talk about their interests and role in supporting um, a couple different things, uh, which in primarily the, one of the first things we'll be working on together is the signage and creating some really nice physical signage in the park, recognizing that the town has a little bit of funding to support a small project, but what we'd like to do is um, amplify that through partnership with uh, stakeholders on the ground and try to do a full signage program in the park. So we're working towards that goal. Um, I mentioned, you know, sharing information collectively and responding to COVID needs and having an ongoing conversation about the needs around that. Um, and then the other kind of action committee that we're looking to form, and again, Lisa's in the process right now of reaching out to individuals, um, is to focus around uh, attraction and marketing for the park. Um, so that's another primary uh, stakeholder group that will be forming kind of an action committee to develop that. Um, in terms of getting organized, we're also hoping to form kind of an action committee that would work with the town and the two subcommittees to um, really stay organized, help make decisions, and just steer the direction of everything. Um, another piece of this, the kind of the final piece that's really, really important is to provide ongoing communications and engagement with, again, business owners and uh, property owners in the park. Um, we heard during the market analysis and continue to hear that there's a need to better connect people and strengthen those relationships and that network, both internally and within the town. Um, so we're developing uh, digital media structures based on the, the website that Lisa just shared for the park, um, but providing you know, more frequent updates social media engagement, those types of things to help just create more of a culture around the park. So that's what we're working on, really looking forward to it. We're just getting started, um, but happy to answer any additional questions anybody might have. So, so thank you for, for all that information that's, um, and, and, and I'd like to, and I'll ask Lisa if she wants to jump on it as well too. Um, but, but I'd like to continue the discussion with um, Howard Stein Hudson and then save the questions for afterwards. Lisa, does that work for you or did you want some? No, absolutely. Um, you know, right, that works for me, thanks. Okay, great. So thank you for, first, congratulations. A lot of, a lot of great things happening in Chelmsford. Um, thank you for the, the information and, and um, a lot that you guys are doing, but Jim, you, you mentioned a number of different industries that are strong, so kudos to Chelmsford for hitting them. The one that you didn't mention is housing, which we all always hear is, that's the one that also is growing and hasn't had a, a downturn. And because uh, you, need, you need places for, for all these workers to live as well too. Uh, and, and so to, to touch upon the housing part of it, um, I've asked Katie Enright from Howard Stein Hudson to, to pick up that piece of the conversation. Um, and then, then we'll open it up to Q&A. How's that sound? All right, so Katie, take it away. Thank you. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Katie Unright. I'm a professional engineer and the manager of the Howard Stein Hudson's Chumsford office. Um, and as um, Lisa and Stephanie stated, there's a ton of stuff going on in Chumsford. Um, a lot of stuff right now related to multifamily housing. Um, and I'm going to just show you some projects that Howard Stein Hudson is working on currently. But you can see that there's uh, various different housing projects going on. Um, throughout the town, not just in the 129 overlay district, um, and are using various modes of, of zoning to get approved. So um, if you can flip to the next few, this is just a little bit about Howard Stein Hudson. Um, we do a lot of traffic engineering, um, traffic impacts and permitting, roadway design, transportation planning. We're now doing structural engineering, complete streets, bus rapid transit, construction services, and public involvement. That's a lot of stuff that we are now doing. We're up to about 85 persons and we have offices in Boston, um, Chumsford and Worcester. 
Um, I do private land development, civil engineering um, mostly. And um, to flip to the next one, we're talking a little bit today about some projects, um, some exciting things that have been going on um, currently in the town of Chelmsford. Um, I think you've seen this project before, but it's currently fully built and, and almost 100% occupied, but the Kinlock um, to start off with a 129 project. Um, this was a project that stemmed from the business amenity overlay district that the town of Chelmsford was able to get approved through town meeting, which allowed multifamily um, development within a historically industrially zoned district in the town of Chelmsford. Um, the Kinlock is actually right outside my back door at my office. It was previously a, a nine acre parcel, or it is a nine acre parcel that was previously wooded um, and was located in the industrial district. Um, with the new business amenities overlay district, we were able to design and permit 168 apartments. Um, this is a great project. You can see this is the two story building um, that we put out at the front um, to kind of help blend and transition from the residential district on the other side of the road into the site. And then there's um, three additional buildings at the back of the site that are all four stories each. Um, there's a pool, a clubhouse, um, a dog area, a pocket park, a fitness center, exterior grills, and a walkway around the whole, um, the whole facility. Um, and what this does is it brings a people a place to live in the industrial district and a place to walk um, within the 129 area. So this is a, a great new addition and, and this is just getting um, completed uh, in Chelmsford right now. So the next one is, um, this is the grist mill which also recently um, got 100% occupied. This is 32 condominium units located right in the center of town, actually just to the back of some of the buildings located in the, in the center of Chelmsford. This is 32 condominiums um, right on Beaver Brook. Um, on the right-hand side of this picture, which you can't see is the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. So everyone has front door access to the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Um, and in the back is Beaver Brook and a brook walk along the top of the brook. And this connects you right to the center of town. So literally you walk out your side door um, and you're across the street from Fishbones. Um, you're right next to our Artisans Exchange. You're right next to all of the great shops um, and restaurants in Chelmsford Center. And just a quick easy walk to the library, uh, to Andiamo, to the fitness center. Um, all the great downtown Chelmsford amenities. So this is this is now fully occupied. Um, and we're looking to do a very similar project across the street. So um, just to kind of stay on this slide, we're looking at doing a, a sister building um, right across the street on another parcel of property in the center of town. Um, it's about a three and a half acre parcel. We're looking at taking two historic buildings uh, located on that site and creating a new restaurant, um, eight apartments, um, and also another 32 unit condominium building that will be done in a different exterior style, um, but we're currently permitting that right now. And as Lisa stated, um, the town of Chumpsford has been accepting applications and moving things forward via Zoom. So we're very um, grateful to that, that we're able to keep these projects moving forward uh, during these times of COVID. So some great things happening also in Chumpsford Center. Um, to move on to the next slide. This is a project that's finally happening. This one's in, actually in North Chelmsford. Um, the grist mill project I just showed you and the new project that's happening across the street is actually being completed under another zoning initiative, which was the center village overlay, which allowed for multifamily development um, and a special permit to essentially um, get relief you needed to create a good project in the center of Chelmsford. So again, another zoning initiative helped us create um, these two projects this project is, a, is, a, is an infill project in North Chelmsford that's currently under construction, which is 18 new units of rental housing. Um, this was a, a, a kind of an old dilapidated 19 unit, um, two buildings there on the right. Um, a developer came in and purchased this parcel and to basically be able to fund the improvements to really kind of bring this whole area up and those two apartment buildings up and create the new apartment building Town of Chumpsford worked with us to get a variance for floor area ratio um, and we're able to, the developer was then able to bring in the cash influx needed to not only get 18 new units on this site, but also be able to significantly upgrade um, basically a, a very old complex, a very tired complex of the existing 19 units there on the right. So again, um, we used um, 
the kind of the existing nonconformance of what was going on here. We worked with the neighbors um, throughout the process and we were able to, to bring this project up. Um, to move on to the next slide. Um, this is another project that's under construction. As I said, there is a lot going on in Chelmsford and, and outside of the 129 area. This is a Beaverbrook Crossing. Um, this is a, a project on Route 110 in Chelmsford at the corner of 110 and Hunt Road. Um, this project was um, permitted as a 40B. This is 84 units in three buildings and it consists of one, two, and three bedroom units. Um, really easy to get to being on Route 110 um, with Beaver Brook behind the site. Uh, the site was historically used, you probably won't buy it, there was a contractor's yard here before with giant piles of material and landscape vehicles coming in and out um, all the time. So this, this project is, is currently also under construction um, in Chelmsford um, and is a great new addition to the 110 area. Uh, the next slide is um, a very exciting project that we're just in the in the beginning stages of. Um, but we are working on, this is historically known as the UMass West Campus, which was, was recently auctioned off over the last year and a half um, to a developer. Um, this is a 34 acre site with multiple existing buildings on it. Um, the purchaser of the site is now working with Hanover companies. Um, and we are in the process of due diligence right now and working with the town of Chelmsford. Um, a lot of these projects require significant infrastructure, so we're working diligently with the town of Chelmsford to, to review the infrastructure and, and uh, make some of these projects happen. But this is a, a very exciting project. Um, over the 34 acres, they're looking to do somewhere between three and 400 units um, with some affordability components um, to the project. Um, so this is just currently before has had some informal meetings with the Board of Selectmen and we're working diligently with a, um, a core group of people at the town of Chelmsford to kind of move this project forward um, in a positive manner. Um, so to move, and this is being done, sorry, go back one second. This is being done, right now we're looking at permitting this as a LIP or a friendly 40B. Um, this area is zoned residential right now, um, residential single family. Um, historically, it was used for a, a multitude of different commercial purposes and educational purposes. Um, this will be a long process, certainly through the town of Chelmsford, but right now we're looking at working with the Board of Selectmen um, through the friendly 40B process to, to move this forward um, into fruition. So, and then last but not least, we're working on a couple of, of, of boring old subdivisions, um, but there's still additional properties in Chelmsford that people are looking to do multifamilies. This is a project on Groton Road that we're working on right now in a um, residential C zoning district right on Route 40 and the Route 3 corridor. So extremely easy to get on and off the highway. There's not a lot of duplex development in Chelmsford. Um, so we are proposing 12 duplexes on this parcel um, with great access certainly to the highway um, and it brings a certain level, a certain different level of a type of housing and a type of affordability um, to that area and to the town of Chelmsford. So um, just kind of a smattering of what's going on throughout the town. Certainly 129 is, is an area of interest, but um, there's a lot going on in Chelmsford and a lot of um, multifamily um, opportunities that are that are happening right now. So with that, turn it back over to Stephanie. I probably talked a little too fast <laughs> if you have any questions. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, well, we will have questions, I'm sure, but but I, I think, uh, and if we can bring everybody back on screen as well too, but you guys have have gone through a lot of information in a very short amount of time. And certainly that there's a lot going on in Chelmsford. So uh, first, thank you, Lisa, Jim, Krista, Katie, thanks for, for the information and congratulations to town of Chelmsford, Kamoyne and Howard and Hudson. You guys have just really been doing a great job, especially during this time. So what we'd like to do, like I said, this is our first time doing this, this virtual, so we may be running out of time, I don't know. But what we'd like to do is bring all the attendees back online so we can all see each other. And, um, and then if you want to, if, you, if people have questions or they want to participate, turn your video on. Um, I, I think there are a lot of questions that people are thinking of as, as you've thrown out a lot of information as well too. And Katie, I, um, I'm sorry, Lisa, I don't know if you want to start the conversation as well too or, or the questions as well. And um, if there are other projects that you've 
want to chime in on as people come back on screen. Well, I just uh, thank you, Katie, for um, making the time to share more about the housing projects. We are a housing choice community. Um, housing is not necessarily in my wheelhouse of, of the work that I do. So I appreciate your time in, in presenting all of that because we all know how much housing has come into Chelmsford recently. And as we heard from each of us, it's all about zoning. And that's been a lot of Evan's efforts that happen behind the scenes so that these projects can come forward out into, um, you know, private investment. And, and we do have a lot more conversations that are just in uh, preliminary development and conversation of, um, you know, consideration. But I think the, the word of encouragement to other communities and colleagues is to revisit zoning, um, keep, keep collaborating. I know that when I talk with my equivalents, it's really helpful to understand and we all kind of run into the same barriers and same challenges, but we have different communities and, and different needs. So I appreciate the, the networking and, and being part of the, of the Middlesex Coalition. I don't know if Evan or, or Paul would like to um, kind of add a few comments and coming into the, you know, wrapping it up a little bit from our presentations. Well, I think, uh, hi, it's Paul Cohen, town manager. Um, I think the big thing, and you've seen it, is, is the commercial activity 129, but also the housing. In addition to the units that, that Katie spoke of, we have units under construction um, and Evan can really have on on Gorham Street that are under construction now. We've also been approached uh, for a potentially uh, multi hundred unit, uh, <laughs> unit construction on Riverneck Road at the old former Mercury computer site. Uh, the, the, the you know the clearly there's a housing market that's out there. Um, what this is bringing, though, and I really want to bring this to your attention and all the communities, the, the, the concern that, and, that we have in Chelmsford and its constraint, and it, it's not just for Chelmsford, but for communities in our area of Middlesex Street, such as Lowell, Tingsborough, and so forth, is sewer capacity. Um, obviously, the, the influx of multifamily residential units bring significant sewer capacity con challenges. Um, most of our communities are tied into the Greater Lowell Wastewater Plant. That plant is running near capacity. Um, and so we've got a challenge going forward. Um, and again, when I say we, meaning Chelmsford, Greater Lowell communities, and really I think mostly Eastern Massachusetts, is that if the initiative of the governor and the legislature is to provide additional housing opportunities, we need to be able to provide the infrastructure, whether it's sewer, water, or, or others, um, in order to meet those needs going forward. So um, that's the point I want to get across. I don't know, Evan, if you have anything you want to add to our discussion this morning before we open it up. Yeah, I would just like to, can you hear me? I would just like to add uh, or summarize that uh, I think Chelmsford's uh, perspective is that housing is a critical component of economic development. As you heard from uh, Katie Enright, um, much of our zoning strategies and housing strategies are um, specifically designed for different geographic areas of town. Um, and I think the final key, which you've heard from, from Lisa, is that it's, it's critical to be receptive to the, to the market demands and interest, um, which I think Chelmsford has, uh, has shown over the, uh, the last decade with the various uh, zoning overlays and initiatives to um, assist the private uh, market in, um, in their investments and redevelopment and new housing. Thank you. Thanks, Evan and, and, and Paul. And, um, and, and I, I guess I would like to open it up to anyone at this point, whether you have questions or comments or feedback, just thoughts. We, we want to keep it a casual discussion. So uh, just either unmute yourself at this point and, and jump in, raise your hand, however you want to do it. Um, but I, I know people will have, will have thoughts. Mark, do you want to jump into the conversation? I know you do a lot of development. In, in the area with Reamer and Bronstein. Yeah, I, I, I don't really have a specific question. Uh, uh, Mark Vaughn with uh, Reamer and Bronstein Law Firm, do a lot of land use and permitting law in the area, and including in the, the town of Chelmsford. And uh, 
I just want to maybe um, reiterate you know, a couple of things that were said before that, uh, you know, Chelmsford has been an absolute pleasure to, to work with. Uh, we do represent the uh, property owner of that 330 uh, Bill Ricker Road property that was talked about earlier with uh, Triton coming in as well as Press Cafe. And, you know, I just want to indicate that uh, I know, you know, over the past couple of years working with uh, Evan, Lisa and, you know, the entire town, um, you know, I think they recognize, you know, as it related to the, the zoning bylaw tweak that needed to be made to the overlay last year to allow for, in limited instances, you know, a drive-through component to be able to help amenitize um, a, um, an office park setting like this was, was critical. Um, and, you know, I think uh, as a result of their efforts, uh, you know, being able to attract someone like Press Cafe, I think, um, you know, really showed that it uh, made a lot of sense. So, um, so it, it's been, you know, um, nothing but a, a positive experience in, in terms of all that. And it, I think everyone's excited to, you know, kind of see that uh, that building get transformed over the next uh, year or so. But, yeah, and the zoning certainly is an excellent point. I know we have a number of other municipalities on the line as well, too, and certainly something that they all struggle with as well. Um, so thank you. Um, any other uh, other thoughts that you guys want to throw out there? And while I'm waiting for somebody to jump forward, um, I, I know it's not a shy bunch, but uh, Krista, you mentioned you mentioned signage. And, and I thought, Trish, of you at E-Ink, which I know signage is not your thing, but that would be really pretty cool to have an E-Ink sign there. Well, which... that's funny because I just sent you an email. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Should we, should we be introduced? Because that's what we do. We do signage. Um, well, here you go. I, I so that you might be an interesting thing to have our marketing or sales meet. Okay. Um, I will, I will connect you with Lisa offline and we'll, yes. we'll have a conversation. But for those of you who don't know, e-ink, e they do the electronic ink for, I always say the nooks and the, and the Kindles, but you do it for everything else as well. Yeah, too. we have, we have, um, if you look sometimes, we have, um, even Boston, we have transportation sign. The MBTA uses us um, for signs. Um, we have Macy's and Home Depot, those little signs when something's on sale. Um, that's us but we can do bigger and better and bolder and it's amazing technology. So it really might be a good, a good, just to meet up and, and, and um, give some information to you about what we can do for you. Yeah, for signage. Absolutely. We'd love to hear, we'd love to sit down and talk with you. And, um, we have and it would be great to be local, like something local, a local partnership would be amazing. It, it, and it's really good information for all our municipalities as well too. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll make that happen. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. It's 11 o'clock. Um, and, and certainly that's when we said we we're going to end. Um, I don't want to cut off discussion if anyone else wants to chime in as well, too. But um, l let me know. This is your time. Just Okay. Well, I guess we all have work. we got to get back to then. Good. Well, I, again... You. Good. Okay. Um, thank you again to the, the town of Chelmsford, Camoyne Associates, Howard Stein Hudson. Great information. A lot of a lot of uh, great resources out there, and um, we'll send all of this information to the group as well too. And um, just continue the conversations and keep moving forward. Does that work for everyone? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful. Thank Thanks a lot, guys. Great. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye guys. Thanks. Good seeing everyone. Same here. Okay.